Hello world, it's Travis Bolin. Today we'll be working on a soprano ukulele kit. First thing I like to do is take out the instructions. But wait, there aren't any instructions in this box. They're online. Let's take a look at them here. Overall, pretty good step-by-step -step instructions. There's a few details that I personally would have added, but we'll talk about those further on in the video. Also, they have a few photos on the site. Now let's get to the parts. You have a screwdriver, string, screws for the bridge, glue, inlays for the bridge, bridge saddle, the bridge, screws for the tuning keys, the ferrules for the tuning keys, the tuning keys, a dowel rod to connect the body to the neck, a nut, the body, a neck, a fretboard, and they also offer you some paint there as well. A few things you'll need are some wood clamps, a mallet, a strap, and some light sandpaper. The first thing I did was lightly sand the body and the neck and prepared for painting or staining. I used the paint that came with the kit. I will say there wasn't a whole lot of paint so I had to get kind of creative with my painting style and my colors. Right here I'm mixing the red with the yellow and the green to make a brown. I then used that to paint the top of the ukulele. I'm going to go ahead and speed this process up a little further along. There we go. I ran out of paint pretty quick, so I had to pull some paint on my own. I ended up doing the sides maroon and the back black. You can see here. After a little searching, I was able to find some more brown paint of my own so I could paint the neck. Once I had that all painted, I let everything sit and dry in front of the fan for a while. You can see here. And once it was dry, I came back to it with the fine grit sanding block just to knock off any thick spots on that paint just to give it a nice smooth matted finish. Then I installed the tuning keys. All the holes were pre-drilled so the lines matched up really good and they offered the screwdriver so it was very simple. Then I installed the tune and key ferrules to the headstock. These are flat ferrules, so I did put a dab of glue under each one to hold it in place. Now we're going to install the dowel rod splint into the end of the neck. We're going to take a little bit of the glue that they provided, squeeze a little bit down in the hole. Then we're going to grab the dowel rod and just tap it in just a little over halfway. Now let's add the bridge. The first thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit of glue on the bottom, and then there's two screws that mount this bridge, and they line up with two drill holes that are in the body. So once you have that glued, and you have it mounted into place, you can see here I'm just screwing it down. And once you have it screwed down, you can use these two little dot inlays to put over them and just tap them into place. It's nice for decorative. Now it's time to marry the neck to the body. First, I'm gonna take the glue, put a little bit down in the hole in the body. Then I'm gonna put a little glue on the heel of the neck. Then I'm gonna mount the neck up with the body, give it a nice push and get it together nice and tight. Once you have that in tight, you won't want to just clean up any glue that may have uh, leaked out. Now to keep this firm while it's in place, I am going to put a strap around this just to hold the neck to the body real nice and tight.
Once that dried a little bit, I did come back with the fine grit sanding block and go over the neck and prepared it for the fretboard. But before that, I'm gonna install this bridge saddle rounded edge on top. And then I'm gonna locate our scale length. That's the distance between the nut and the bridge saddle. And for this particular instrument, we're looking at about 13.5 inch scale length. So I've made a mark there to mount that nut in the correct position before I uh, glue on the fretboard. To make sure the nut was glued in there straight, I just lined the fretboard up there on a dry fit. Then I added a little glue to the back of the fretboard. and then mounted it in place, made sure it was nice and even and put a couple of clamps on it just to hold it in place. Then after a couple hours of drying, I did remove the clamps and the straps. I had this brown wood furniture marker and I thought it'd be cool to do a faux inlay around the ukulele, the body and the sound hole. Once I had that done, I just went over the guitar and the glued edges with a little piece of wet sandpaper. And then just to take it one artsier step further, I got my wood burner out and I wood burned a really cool dot design on the top of the ukulele. This took me a little more time, but it was well worth it for the looks of the instrument. Now we're going to put the strings on it. So the way these strings go is the thinnest one is going to be on top closest to you. Then it decreases from the thickest to one slightly thinner than that and then farthest away from you is gonna be one just slightly thinner of that. It's kinda of unusual, but the way you can remember it is, as long as you have the top ones the thinnest, then the rest kinda of decrease as normal. And the way you install these is you tie a knot on one end, slide that knot in the little groove that's on the bridge, and then you just bring your string up and put it through the nut and tighten it in the tuning key. The fretboard had a little bit of overlay, so I masked it off and took a little bit of a file and just got it real nice smooth with the neck. And then it was finished.
Now let's play it and rate it. Overall, I give this kit a 7. The neck had some spots in it I had to sand a lot. The fretboard didn't line up perfect. As well as the directions that weren't even physical didn't talk about the scale length. Thanks for watching the Kit Pit. Subscribe now for the latest videos.